In this module, we want to talk about a certain class of problems, those that involve motion with constant acceleration. And so in one dimension, we'll start with, we can say we have some acceleration function of time, a of x of t, and it's simply constant, not a function of time at all, and we'll represent that constant with a. And so you might ask, uh, why we have to do this. I'm going to be going through quite a bit of math here because there isn't really new physics here, is it? I mean, we have our fundamental relationships. Our fundamental relations. And those tell me that uh, velocity is derivative. of uh, position with respect to time. And then our acceleration is derivative of uh, velocity with respect to time. And then by inverting these, What we saw in the last few modules, the position is the antiderivative of the velocity. The velocity is the antiderivative of the acceleration. And I can essentially use that to solve any kinematics problem. So why do I want to go through a whole bunch of math now for this special case of motion with constant acceleration? And the reason is these represent an entire class of problems that we end that we end up running into a lot. And so if we can do all of this math once, then we can uh, save ourselves from having to do it time and time again. So for example, if I have a ball that's falling under constant acceleration, or I might have a car that's moving under constant acceleration and it needs to get through over some railroad tracks before it gets hit by a train, or say I have a runner who then uh, runs for a short time and then uh, walks for a time and then say runs really fast and then gets eaten by a velociraptor. Okay, so I have each of these segments where there's a constant acceleration and so, and in, in one dimension. And so there's this entire class of problems that satisfy these uh, specific conditions where we have 1D motion We have constant acceleration, constant acceleration, and we have two points in time in time, which I'll call t initial and t final. And what we want is we want to to find relationships, relationships between initial position, initial velocity, and initial time, and final position, final velocity, and final time. Now, of course, the initial acceleration and final acceleration is the same given constant acceleration. Now, of course, we can, in fact, invoke these for, these for any, any specific example for each one of these. We could invoke these conditions, go back to our fundamental relations, and derive all the relationships we want. However, what I'd like to do is just derive those relationships once, and then we can come up with, then we can use those for any problem where we have constant acceleration. And so my motivation for this is really twofold. Here, I'll, I'm going to write, write this down. We're going to derive relationships for this entire class of problems. 
And my motivation for this is twofold, as I said. First of all, is because we're going to then explore this entire class of problems a lot. And so we're going to use these constant acceleration equations that we're going to derive now all of the time. But my second motivation for doing this, and I'm saying this because we're going to get into some some derivations that can be seen as a little tedious and long. So I, I, I want to emphasize why this is so important. Because this exercise is the type of thing scientists do all the time. It may not be constant acceleration, it's something else. But we, we have some job where we're working with a particular class of problems. And so what we do is we use our fundamental physics equations relationships that are always true we apply the the conditions of that particular class and derive a derivative relationships that we can then use for any type of problem in that class and so this is the type of problem the type of process that practicing scientists and engineers do all the time but it's also important then not to confuse the fundamental relationships from the derivative ones we might in fact be using constant acceleration equations a lot more than our fundamental relationships that does not mean that they're more fundamental it just means that since you're working with this particular class of problems a lot more, these derivative relationships are more useful. So it's two things, one of which is being able to derive useful equations for specific uh, examples, but also making sure that you keep track of what is fundamental and, and uh, what you derive from the fundamental relationships. Okay, so now let's, let's get started. If I have a uh, constant acceleration, so my acceleration is simply constant. And now applying our fundamental relationships for this is really easier than many of the examples we were doing uh, in the previous modules. If I want to calculate the exposition of velocity as a function of time, and remember we're in, we're in 1D here, so we're just going to work with the uh, components, the x component of these things, instead of having to worry about all the vectors and unit vectors. So the x component of the velocity is equal to uh, the antiderivative, which is a of t plus an integration constant c. Let us define our initial velocity, which we'll call v naught which is equal to v at t is equal to 0, which is equal to c. So we have uh, v x of t is equal to v naught plus a t. So there is our velocity as a function of time for uh, constant acceleration given some initial velocity uh, v naught. Now to do the uh, x as a function of t we just need the antiderivative of the velocity so v0 t antiderivative of a t is one half a t squared again plus some integration constant we define an initial position x naught is equal to the position at t is equal to 0, which, you know, 0, 0, gives us our integration constant back again. And so now we have x of t is equal to x naught plus v naught t plus 1 half a t squared. And so these now are our two uh, trajectory and our velocity, x component of the velocity as a function of time. And so it's all referenced for t is equal to zero. And so if every problem we encounter has t is equal to zero, uh, then we're, we're good to go. 
Um, however, you know, that's not really what we wanted. We wanted to find relationships between two points in time, uh, t initial and t final, where they there are not necessary where t initial is not necessarily uh, t is equal to zero. Say for example, where here where I had a runner, I had three different stages, and in each stage the acceleration is constant. It could be different. Here's a constant acceleration one in that stage. There was a constant acceleration in this stage constant acceleration in this stage. And so I want to deal with each stage separately, these two points in time, where this is the initial and this is the final. Then I want to look at these two points in time, where this is the initial and this is the final. And then I want to look at these two points in time, I'll go down here, these two points of time where this is the initial and this is the final. And so while these these work great as long as I'm always referencing t is equal to zero. And, and to be honest, that's uh, most often what we do. We would also like to to come up with some expressions that are handy to use when I have uh, t initial and t final. And so uh, given that that's going to be, take a little longer, we'll put that together in the next module.